simple terms, cadence is a measure of how many steps you take per minute, counting both feet. And it's the one commonly measured running metrics that most people love to talk about and discuss. Read any article on running cadence and it's likely to tell you that 180 steps per minute is the holy grail. Most articles don't really tell you why. I'm not sure that anyone even remembers why, but it's deeply ingrained in running law. I believe from working with and analysing more than 3,000 runners and indigenous people that the reason is linked to our fascial system. Our optimum cadence zone is somewhere between 175 and 185 steps per minute. This is the frequency at which our species evolved to move. Sinking in our cadence with the elastic frequency of our body will ensure that the impact the body creates as it hits the ground is turned into elastic propulsion. It's almost too good to be true. We hit the ground, create free elastic energy, and it propels us into the air. If we move at a cadence that is lower than our 175 to 185 zone, we will lose our ability to maximise this endless energy source. Most of the runners who come to see me for coaching are running at a cadence between 160 and 170 steps per minute. When they attempt to change this, most find it very challenging to run at a higher cadence, and that's linked to the common misconception that cadence is the answer to all our running form concerns that if we get that bit right, the rest will follow. I can understand that logic. If you take a hill striker or someone who is overstriding and get them to run at a higher cadence, the chances are you will shorten their stride length and you will get the foot landing underneath the body, thus largely eradicating the heel strike problem. Surely then you have fixed the biggest visible issue and that the problem is solved. Well, sadly not the body should naturally land the feet in the correct fashion. The big lesson here is that cadence is only part of the equation. By only focusing on cadence and not changing anything else, the result will be shuffling around with quick feet, a shorter stride, and most importantly, very little in the way of vertical oscillation or air. You will be completely sucked to the ground, far less dynamic and most likely struggling with your breathing. So what we need to do is understand the relationship between our cadence and the rest of our movement. That way you can truly understand our elastic system. As the runner's foot makes contact with the ground, the elastic energy is created. As the knee softens, the elastic energy is stored. And as the foot leaves the ground, the elastic energy fires. When you take your practice outside and you're looking at your cadence, never try and move it by more than four beats up or down per minute. Those people I've analyzed who move incredibly well and are able to optimize the elasticity in their body and move the way I believe our species is intended to move have almost all moved at a cadence between 175 and 185. And when you combine it with dynamic and elastic movement, it becomes a potent weapon. My research on cadence and fascial frequency took me to Vienna to study Kipchoge's successful attempt at breaking sub two hours for the marathon. So what we can see from this screen, we can actually put a stopwatch on the screen and we can actually work out uh, Kipchoge's cadence. It's actually bang on 180, which is really, really interesting because if he runs at that cadence, He's joining in with the elastic energy of his body. Every time his foot hits the ground, two and a half times his body weight comes back in, creates a load of elastic energy in his body. That's then stored and then released. The cadence that Kipchoge is running at means that he is sinking in with that elastic frequency perfectly. So it's kind of free elastic energy, free speed if you like. I think it's one of the reasons he's such a good runner.